Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this tutorial, we're going to look at passing by value versus passing by reference. And we're going to talk a little bit about variable scope, which is something we've, we've already uh, covered, but I'm going to go into it again in, in a little bit more detail. And this is actually something that uh, a few people have asked me to make this particular tutorial. Other programming languages have what we call passing by reference, and I'm going to go into what that actually is. In Java, we only have passing by value, and I'll, I'll explain what that is too, and we'll see what the implications of that actually are. So I've got a uh, main method set up here in a class, and uh, I want to be able to call some methods of this class, and I, I don't want to make them static because I feel that looks a bit ugly so I'm going to actually create an object from my class here and this is a very common way to start a program actually so I'll say app, app equals new app and then I can use this variable app to call non-static methods of this class. Some people uh, don't like to have a variable that has the same name as a class and personally I, I like that because it helps connect the variable to the class but it's, it's doubly important if you do this to make sure that your variables must have a lowercase first letter always and your classes should always have an uppercase first letter. That's the convention in Java and it's really important to follow it. Otherwise it's confusing to read code even for someone like me who's been doing this for a while. So uh, I'm going to create a method here. Let's create a public void show. And I'm going to say that we're going to pass a um, we're going to pass an integer into here. So I'll call it int value. And uh, here in the main method, let's let's just demonstrate show working. So now I can say app dot show, and I can pass in let's say the value seven. So let's run this, and um, actually nothing's going to happen because I haven't put any output in show. Let's put a sys out value is and uh, plus value. So if I run this now, of course this app's just going to say value is 7. So we're, we're literally just getting the number 7 and with primitive variables you can think of them as being like a bucket that you can put data in. This is just reserving a little bit of memory when you declare a primitive um, a variable of a primitive type like int with a lowercase first letter there. And, uh, and then we're just displaying what's in that memory. So it, it's pretty simple once you've got your head around basic Java. Now what I want to do is I'm going to declare a variable in this main method here. Let's say int. And everything that I'm about to show you would work regardless of what I call this variable. And as it happens, I'm going to give it the same name as, uh, as this argument. But that's, that's irrelevant. It doesn't matter. And I'm only doing this to emphasize that the, the names of arguments and the names of variables you pass into them are, um, are not connected. So I'm going to say here int value equals 7 and then we can pass value into there. And if I run this again it says value is 7. So here, here we're reserving a bit of memory, we're putting the value 7 into it and we're passing it into this method and we're displaying it here and it's really important to realize that what we're doing here is we're copying data from one variable to another so i could call this let's let's call it you know value two or something it doesn't matter i could give it a completely different name if i want in fact i could call it fox it doesn't make any difference when you create methods you, you you often don't even know how, how those methods are going to be used. They might be part of a an API that you're going to distribute on the internet and you don't know what the names of the variables people are going to use with them are going to be. So um, that's why um, the kind of convention is that the way Java works is that your your variables are always copies of um, of any variable that's passed in here. So this co contains a copy of the value of this. Let's change this, change this back to value here. And in fact, um, the, the scope of a variable, the region in which you can actually use, use it and refer to it, is normally the 
closest pair of enclosing pair um, enclosing curly parentheses. So this int value here, the the scope of it is these parentheses here. So it only exists in this space, and we can only refer to it in that space. At this point, as I say, we're, we're making a, a copy of the value that it contains and passing it into this new variable. And uh, this new variable here, the scope of this is going to be these curly brackets. So the scope of the variables in your argument list are the curly brackets that follow them here. So this variable here, we can only refer to in here. And just to kind of uh, drive this message home, and by the way, I should mention at this point, that this is called passing by value. Uh, I suppose because you're, you're just making a copy of the value. Uh, we'll see how that differs in a minute to passing by reference. But uh, yeah, the, the point is that we're just copying a value here and this is called passing by value. We're just passing a value into this method. So let, let's copy this and um, I'm gonna paste it here and let's say one dot value is. And of course, this is going to display this variable, and it's going to say value is seven. And let's uh, let's call this again after app dot show. And let's follow the the progress of the program here. So we're going to start up here. We're going to move down line by line, and then we're going to get to here. And then the the flow of the program, the um, the way the program actually works, step by step is uh, like control is going to be passed into this method at this point. So we're going to do this line, this line, this line, and then this line. And at that point, we jump into here. So let's say for that reason, two value is, and we'll display the value there. Then I'm going to change the value in here. So I'm going to say value equals eight. And then we're going to come to sysout three. And we're going to say value is such and such again. And then after this method returns here, we're going to come back to here. And in fact, we'll, we'll execute this line here. So this becomes four. Now the question is here, um, what do you think this is going to display? Well, the first one's easy. That's going to be seven. And uh, then we go into here. So what's this going to say? Well, this is going to be a copy of this. So this is going to say seven. And here we change this and we're actually changing this variable now. We're changing it to eight and we're displaying um, the new value here. So the third one's going to say eight. Then we return back up to the main method. And um, what's this going to pr print out? Is it going to print seven or is it going to print eight? And if I run this now, you'll see that it prints seven. And the reason for that, if you followed what I said, is that this is a completely different value. It's this to this here. So here we're changing this, this variable which is this one, and the scope of this is here. So changing this variable will not affect this variable, and that's why here, this variable in the main method is still, it still has the value seven. And this is a characteristic of passing by value. Now let's, let's take a look at how this works with a non-primitive type. So here I've got a, me I've got a um, class called person, and I've given person a name, and we can initialize name with a constructor. I've also given name get and set methods, and I've given this class a two string method. So we can use variables of this class, objects of this class, with, um, with system.out.println, and this will determine what's then displayed. So I'll create um, another method here, and uh, I can call it show again. I can say public void show, and uh, we'll say that this takes an object of the type person. So this is called method overloading, which I'm pretty sure we've seen this already, but you can have methods with the same name as long as they have a different argument list. And uh, clearly having, having an argument of type person is different to having an argument of type int. And this is a non-primitive type, of course, it's a class. And you can tell because by convention, the first letter of a class must always be uppercase. So let's do some new stuff here. I'm gonna, let's put a, um, like a comment here, one line comment, and I'm just gonna put a load of equal signs to separate what we're about to do from what we've originally done. And uh, let's put some equal signs up here as well. So this is kind of the first block 
where we're looking at passing primitive types by, va by value. And now we're going to look at passing this non-primitive person type by value. So here I'll create an object of type person. Let's say person, and again I'll call it person, equals new person. And we'll give person a name like um, Bob. And let's, uh, let's display Bob now. So I'm going to say here, sysout person. And because we've got that two-string method, sysout will invoke that two-string method to display, um, the, in this case, just the name variable here in person. So let's run this. I'll run that. And um, actually, what, what I'll do, I think, is uh, let's, we'll have a sysout here just to create a new line. And after that, so that's going to create a blank line in the output. And then I'm going to start numbering again. So we'll say here, one dot person is plus person. So that should work. Let's run this. So after our, after our original output here, we've got the blank line. And now it says one person is person name Bob. Um, so I'm going to now pass person to this show method. So let's say here, app dot show person and uh, now we're going to invoke this this version of show and Java knows which version to invoke because we're passing a person object here so it's got to be this one right so it automatically calls the right version of show in each case so we'll come into show here and now I can do another sysout in fact let's let's copy that one and this time I'll change this to two. Now if I run this, of course, it says the same thing. So two person is Bob. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this person variable here to something else. Let's say person equals new person Mike. And then we'll have another sysout, which will be three. And then finally, we'll come back to our main method up here, if you're still following this. So we're going to do this. We're going to do this stuff here, and then we'll go into here, which will take us into here. And then we'll return at this point. And after we've returned, I'm going to say for person is, and we'll display person again. So my question is to you here, and you can pause the video and think about this if, if you have the inclination to, what is person 4 going to say is, is it going to be Bob or is it going to be Mike? Let's run it and see. And in fact, it's Bob. And if you look at it, this situation is, it's not quite the same, but it's very much analogous to the, um, to this situation here. Here we've got 7787. Here we've got Bob, Bob, Mike, Bob. <laughs> so, uh, it's a similar kind of thing. And what's actually happening here is, um, this, because, because this is a class type, it's a non-primitive type, this is a reference. So uh, when you, back up here, when you write int value, you're allocating enough memory for an actual int, for, for an actual value up to, I don't know what, I can't remember what the maximum value of int is, but it's quite a big number. And you can hold literally that data in this bit of memory. When you declare a variable of a non-primitive type, a class type, you're not here at this point, we're not creating enough memory to actually store objects of this class. Instead, this, this here is actually storing the address in some sense of this object here, because this, this is allocating a bunch of memory, this new statement here, and that's allocating enough memory to hold the data members of the, of the class. And I, I don't know how this works, but I guess there's some kind of lookup table for the methods in there as well. And all that allocates, all this allocates that memory. But this bit here, your variable declaration, is just allocating enough memory to hold the address of that object. So what person here is going to store, what this variable is going to store is kind of an address. So it's exactly like if, if you have a house, this is building the house from your blueprint. And here's the blueprint, the actual class. This bit's actually building the house. And here, we're just taking the address of the house as if it's written down on a piece of paper and putting it in this variable. So uh, when we call app.show, what we're doing is we're copying the address. So this is a new variable 
um, it's this person is not the same as this person. It's a new variable. And we could have called it something completely different, of course. Uh, and this variable here has this scope. And what we're doing is, is we're copying the address that this contains at this point here. We're copying that address into this new variable here. So it's like just making a copy of the address of your house on a piece of paper. And at this point, what we're doing is we're putting a new address into this variable. So uh, that's like, uh, it, it's as if here, here we, we wrote our address of our house, let's say, on a bit of paper. Here's the house. Um, here, at this point, we made a copy of that address onto a new bit of paper. Here's the new bit of paper, this new variable. And here we're, we're erasing the address on that bit of paper and we're writing in a new address and the new address is the address of this object. So uh, that's why here we're displaying this new object. But when we get back up here, where um, of course this variable is still pointing at the address of this object here. So we still display Bob down here. So again, we've got passing by value. Passing by value, it means that we're actually making a copy of the value. It's just that the value, the value contained in this variable is an address, the actual address of an object but we're just copying it into this new variable here. So it works exactly the same. And with Java, we, we always pass by value. There's no passing by reference in Java. In uh, what passing by reference actually is, is in, in many other languages, for example, in C++, uh, you could put a special character here. I think in C++, it's like an and sign. And what that would do would be, it will actually, um, it would actually mean that this variable would become, in effect, the same as this variable. And changing this variable here would also change this one. That would be called passing by reference. And what you're doing then is it's getting a little bit mind boggling until you're used to working with these ideas. But then you would actually be passing the, in some sense, the address of the variable. So it's the address of an address. But that's passing by reference. And it doesn't happen in Java. There's, there's, you can't do that. So you don't really need to know about passing by reference, only passing by value, where you're, you're actually making a copy of what's in the variable. There's one last little thing here that might catch you out, because what would happen if here, at this point, I say person.setName sue? Um, so, so what we're going to see printed down here after, after we've done that is the question. And you might think, well, we're passing by value. That means we're making a, a copy of the variable. So this isn't going to affect what happens up here. You might think that, but you'll be wrong because, of course, this contains the address of this object. And here, when we do this, we're, we're passing this method, the address of this object. And that means that if we call person.setName, person at the moment refers to this object here. So we are going to change the name of this object. And here we're going to see it's going to say Sue. Let's run that. So we've got Bob up here and uh, we've got Bob still here. Here we've, we've, we've set the name of this object, this object here. There's only one object here. We've set it to Sue at that point. Then we take this variable here, we point it at a new object, Mike. So here we're displaying Mike. And then when we, when we return to the main, um, the main method, even though this variable now points at a new object, this variable is still, this reference, we should call it, technically it's a reference variable because it refers to an object. This is still referring to this object. And at this point we changed this object. So that's why we get Sue down here. And uh, yeah, again, I think this is one of those things that if you can understand this, that's really great. And it shows that you've, you've really got a good grasp of how references work and uh, method arguments in Java. If you don't understand it, then just play around with it a bit and try some stuff out yourself and you will get the hang of it. It's just a lot to remember all at once. What would happen if we took this and we moved it below here? And uh, you can play around with this kind of stuff yourself. If I move this below here, 
because this variable here at this point is now pointing at a new object, now we're going to be changing this object here and we're still going to have Bob down here because um, this variable at this point loses the address of this object and it's given the address of this object here. So at the moment we've got Sue down there and if I run this again, now we've got, we've got Bob again. Okay, so uh, let's, let's just undo that and I'll, I'll put the source code on my um, website, caveofprogramming.com, as always. Uh, you'll be able to go to the YouTube video section if you want to and click on the appropriate link there and you'll find the source code in, for this tutorial embedded in, in the page. But um, yes, yeah, this is a lot of stuff, but uh, it, it's, it's worth understanding and you don't have to understand all this stuff at once. It can come together gradually in your mind. And if you have mastered everything up to this point uh, and you're a little bit puzzled by this, it's, it's really worth typing this kind of stuff in and playing around with it, playing around with it yourself. And you don't have to get it all at once if you just come back to it, um, you know, whenever you've got the mood or the time. Gradually, you'll understand how this works because it's not complicated, honestly. It's just um, a lot of things to remember if you see it all at once. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. Um, there'll be some more free tutorials coming soon from me uh, on probably um, annotations, among other stuff. So until next time, happy coding.